What's up guys, it's Mr. Bringle and today we're going to go over the Springs Math Problem Exercises. So at this point you should have already watched the intro video where I talked about the equations and the concepts and went through three example problems. Hopefully you have attempted these exercise problems on your own and now you're here to check your work. So I'll be working through all six problems. Let's go ahead and get started. Problem one, Terry jumps up and down on a trampoline with a frequency of 1.5 hertz. What is the period? So, starts off with an easy one. Frequency is 1.5 hertz. It's looking for the period. We know that period and frequency are reciprocals. So, this will just be one divided by frequency, which is one divided by 1.5 hertz. And that is equal to 0 0.67 seconds. Moving on. And number two, it says Gary Stewart of Reading, Ohio, set a pogo stick record in 1990 by jumping 177,737 times. A, if the pogo stick he used had a force or spring constant... Oops, terrible underline job there, of 6,000 newtons per meter. Let's go ahead and write that down. Remember, this is the, when it says force constant, it's also the same thing as spring constant. So 6,000 newtons per meter. Um, and it was compressed 0.12 meters on each jump. So that is referring to the distance that the spring was displaced from its equilibrium point. Um, what we more commonly referred to as stretch, or in this case, compression of the spring. So that's 0 0.12 meters. And then it says, what force must Gary uh, have exerted on the pogo stick upon each jump? So this is asking us for the restoring force. So I uh, just want to be clear that the restoring force, not only the force that the spring would pull back on um, the object with, but also would be equal to, if you were to compress the spring or pull the spring yourself, that would be equal to uh, the force that the spring would exert back on it once you let go. So we are solving for that force. So we are going to need to use the equation F equals KX, Hooke's Law. So the restoring force is equal to 6,000 newtons, whoops, newtons per meter times 0 0.12 meters. This is going to give us a force of 720 newtons. Okay. Now, uh, part B, it says what force would be exerted back up on Gary each time you went up. So this is actually going to take us back to try one. We got to think about um, Newton's laws. So Newton's third law states that for every force, every action force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. So the answer to part B would be negative 720 newtons. All right, let's move on to the next one. At the post office cliff, a postal worker places a 0.6 kilogram package. So that's going to be our mass. On a scale, compressing the scale by 0.03 meters. So it compresses the scale, that is x. And then it says, what is the force constant of the spring? Okay, or the spring constant, which is k. Okay, and then it says, what happens to the force constant and cliff weighs a heavier package? So we'll get to that. Okay, so this is kind of a, a two-step problem here. So you're probably thinking, well, it would make sense to use this equation, F equals KX, okay, Hooke's law, because we have K, and we're, or I'm sorry, we have X, the uh, compression, and then we're solving for K, but we don't have the force. So, and they throw this random mass in here, so you might also be looking at this equation, the period of a spring is equal to two pi times the square root of mass over spring constant. Um, well, 
so at this point you have to decide okay we're missing something can we what can we use to solve for something that we don't have so basically we're given the mass right so the mass is over here and we're solving for k but we don't have the period and we have no way to solve for the period it hasn't given us frequency there's nothing we can do there so let's just get rid of this equation now looking at f equals kx we have the stretch we're solving for k the force here in this case is actually just equal to the weight of the package, right? The package is sitting on the scale and that's what's pushing it down. So can we calculate the weight of the package, which is a force? Yes, we can, because we have the mass. Remember that Fg, the weight of an object, is equal to its mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So all we have to do here is take 0 0.6 kilograms and multiply it by 10 meters per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so that is going to give us a weight or force of six newtons. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna plug it into this equation over here. So we now have six newtons is equal to K times 0 0.03 meters of compression, which would be three centimeters. Okay, so all we have to do here is divide by 0 0.03 meters, divide by 0 0.03 meters, um, so 6 newtons, this is, don't want that to be confusing there, 6 newtons divided by 0 0.03 meters, so you can see that this is going to give us units of newtons per meter, and that's going to come out to give you a spring constant of... 200 newtons per meter. Moving on. A jack in the box lid will pop open when a crank is turned on the outside of a box. If jack pushes against the inside of the box with a force of three newtons, when the lid is closed, and the spring is compressed 10 centimeters, so that would be X, our compression or stretch, that's 10 centimeters, which is equal to 0 0.1 meters. Again, just divide that by 100. Uh, move the decimal two to the left. And then uh, it says, uh, what is the force or spring constant of the spring? So we are solving for K here. Okay, so. Clearly, we are going to use our, our Hooke's Law equation, F equals KX. Okay, so 3 newtons is equal to solving for K times 0 0.1 meters. So just a different way of doing it, but same calculation that we did in the last problem there. So we will divide this by 0 0.1 meters to get this off. Divide 3 by 0 0.1 meters and you are going to find that your spring constant, K, is equal to 30 newtons per meter. Moving on. Number five says, Sam, a butcher, puts three kilograms of chopped beef on a one kilogram pan. So we'll need to keep that in mind. Um, of his scale, which has a spring whose force constant or spring constant is 400 newtons per meter. So you got to think here because it's given us two masses, but um, he put the meat in the pan, which is on top of the scale. So you're going to combine those two masses and we're going to go ahead and write four kilograms here. And then the spring constant is 400 newtons per meter and then it says what is the period of vibration so period of a spring and then uh, if he adds more beef to the scale what will this do to the period okay so we're going to want to use our period of a spring equation here so 2 pi times the square root of the mass over the spring constant so this is going to be 2 pi times the square root of 4 kilograms 
divided by 400 newtons per meter. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and do 4 divided by 400. Okay, so that's going to give us 2 pi times the square root of 0 0.01. And um, I'm doing this step by step, that, that way you can check your work um, on each part, and that way if you make a calculation error, you can figure out exactly which part it was. Let's go ahead and square root that 0 0.01. Um, and so it's gonna be period of a spring is equal to two pi times 0 0.1. And then we'll go ahead and multiply that by two pi. And that is going to give you 0 0.63 when you round seconds for the period of your spring. Okay, I believe it was 0 0.628 if you are going to three decimals. Okay, now part B, it says if he adds more beef to the scale, what will this do to the period of vibration? So let's think about that. If he adds more beef, that is going to increase the mass. Okay. And um, if you increase the mass, it's in the numerator there. So ultimately, this number that comes out, uh, you know, this would be larger number, this number would be larger, this number would be larger, and therefore the period would also be larger. So it would increase the period of vibration. All right, last problem here. A toy bobs up and down over Campbell's crib with a period of one second. So that's a period of a spring. The toy hangs from the end of a spring whose spring constant is 20 newtons per meter. What is the mass of the toy? Okay, so in this one, we're gonna have to kind of work backwards, so period of the spring, 2 pi times the square root of mass over spring constant. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. We've got 1 second is equal to 2 pi times the square root of mass, which we're solving for, over the spring constant, which is 20 newtons per meter. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do here is we want to get, since we're solving for something that's inside the radical, the mass, we want to get rid of everything that's outside of that square root. So we're going to go ahead and divide by 2 pi to get that off of this side. We need to do it to the other side too. Remember, just like the pendulum math, you want to make sure that when you put this in your calculator, you put in 1 divided by and then put 2 pi in parentheses. Otherwise, we'll do 1 divided by 2 and then multiply that by pi. Okay, so when you do 1 divided by, in parentheses, 2 pi, you should get 0 0.159. And that's going to be equal to what we have left on the other side, which is just the square root of m over 20. Okay. Now, the next step would be to get rid of the square root. So we're going to square both sides. Okay. That will cancel the square root on this side. When you square 0 0.159, which I went ahead and I did not round that number in my calculator. I left it in, square it. It comes out to be 0 0.025. Then that's just equal to m over 20. So the last step here would be to multiply by 20 on each side. Okay. And then that's going to give you your mass. Mass is going to be equal to 5.07 kilograms. And that concludes the problem exercises for the springs math.